uh, we started a little slow, a little sluggish, but uh, look, we found a way to get to get the win. And um, <clears throat> uh, I thought uh, our, our press, when we pressed later in the first half, got us some, uh, you know, changed the pace a little bit. I thought we were a little paralyzed against the zone, so our p the pace was a little bit slower. We're going to have to make some shots. The you know second half we made the adjustment of really attacking to the high post, and um, and uh, we I think you know the first few possessions there the first five six minutes we just attacked everything in that high post area there, and that loosened things up. Um, <clears throat> you know so uh, there were some there were some positives you know with our free throw shooting, and um, uh, again only having 12 turnovers, you know with the pace that we play at that's not a bad stat. But we're going to have to make some threes. I mean, that's just the facts of it. We're going to have to stick them. And, 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 and if not, though, we've got to really attack that high post. That's really, really important. But we're going to have to make some threes. I mean, we're getting some good looks. We just got to put the ball in the basket. But in the end, we got the win. It's all that matters. And uh, looking forward to get back on to the court for the game on Monday to continue to try to just get better and improve and keep working. Josh, speaking of making threes, your freshman backup point guard made a couple of them tonight, had some, some good play and a little bit of freshman play. What's the key to coaching a guy like Jeremiah? Uh, Jeremiah hit a couple of those threes that, that opened, that loosened some things up for us. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. He's going to be one of the fan favorites. He will be like what DJ Steffens was when, you know, for his four years here. That type of, of talent, as in terms of a fan favorite, one, and he can help you win a lot of games just like DJ did, maybe not the athleticism, but how hard he plays. He plays so hard, and he leaves it all on the floor, and he does it through defense. He's a winner, and uh, I think for Tiger Nation, for they get to see this young man for four more, you know, for four years. It's a lot to look forward to with this young man. Coach, what do you think about uh, Nick Marshall's? Play I thought play? I thought Nick came in and gave us good minutes at six rebounds. You know, when Nick rebounds the ball, he puts it at the chin, elbows out, he protects it. Look, Nick, Nick Marshall's going to be a really good player for us. It's just this year, there's gonna, it's going to be a roller coaster for him in terms of minutes. I mean, it's going to be game by game based on how we're playing, who's playing well, and the matchups on the other team. That's just how it's going to be for him his freshman year. It's going to be a little bit of a roller coaster. And he's got to stay the course. But his best basketball is ahead of him. He's got a chance to be a really good player. You see he's got a nice touch around the hoop. He does, you know, I, the important thing is, is, is in time, he's got to continue to even get in better conditioning uh, uh, so he's even quicker off the floor. Uh, but he's a big guy that's, that can play. And I just think his, his future is extremely bright. But for this year, it is going to be a roller coaster as in terms of minutes. There could be one game where he plays a lot, another game not. It's just going to be based on matchups and how the guys in front of him are playing. Josh, Shaq was very quiet in the first half. Did it become a point of emphasis at halftime to get him going? Because he certainly did to start the second yeah, half. Yeah, we, that was our whole thing at halftime is, man, we got we to, you got to get going. We need you. And, and, and we went right at him that first play of the game, uh, the first play of the second half and got to the free throw line, made both free throws, and he was much more active. We were much more active in the high post area in that second half. We didn't settle for threes. And... Um, and again, we're going to have to make some. We're a better shooting team than what we've we've shot. I mean, we just we just got to kind of get in a rhythm and, and, and start putting a few in, and, and I think that will help us get going and kind of just being a uh, you know contagious of contagious positive energy on that. So, but in order for us to do what we want to do, we've got to play inside out, play with great pace, uh, and then when we're, when we're open for the threes, we just got to be tough enough to to, to stick them. Coach, you, you mentioned it, but can you talk a little bit more about the press and how, how it changed the, the pace? Yeah, you know, I mean, we're, we're a team. Uh, we're not going to be a team that's going to press all the time just because of the fact of, you know, you got your bigs in the back and I want to be protective of their fouls and, and everything else. But there's going to be times where we're going to need to press. And I felt we were lethargic that first 10, 11 minutes, so I felt the press got us going and, and got some energy and got the pace back in our advantage. Um, so we're going to have to look at that, that maybe there's some – because I, I was I – was, happy I felt our conversion from our press back to our man defense was good 
And, um, and that was an, an area of an issue of ours in the preseason when we were working on the press was our lack of from press to the conversion to half court defense. We are much better today. And I tell you, sometimes your best press is just a one man press in Jeremiah Martin. I mean, he, he's, you know, puts pressure on the ball. He's as good as a defender and moving his feet laterally as there is out there. Josh, is it because of what Martin brings you with his speed and his defensive intensity that he's getting the bulk of the minutes, uh, all of the backup minutes, and Kedron hasn't played yet, or is it still the lingering shoulder? Ke Kedron is it's been a shoulder injury. He hasn't he hasn't been able to uh, he hasn't been able to play based on his shoulder. It's just a physical thing. Physical. Coach, the three freshmen that you're playing with, uh, Jeremiah, as well as the two Lawson brothers, were you expecting them to be this, this big of a uh, part of the, your plan? Well, I, I, I've said it. Those guys are going to get better with more game experience. The more they play, the better they're going to get. You know, like Diedrich, I, you know, he just does some great things with the ball, and, 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 and he's still got to be better from the free throw line. Uh, and he's got to be better with higher assists and less turnovers. Right now his stat line is he's getting too many turnovers and not enough assists. But you can see Diedrich's upside. And I was glad to see KJ kind of get some groove going there that, you know, got to the free throw line, made his free throws. Because I really believe KJ is going to be a, 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 an elite player for us. And once he gets going, the more experience that he gets, the better we're going to be. And I'm, I, and I'm really proud of Markel. Back-to-back -back games, he's been good for us. I mean, you look at a stat line, eight, four, four, eight points, four rebounds, four assists, no turnovers, one steal, was really solid. That's back-to-back -back games. And TB stat line, 12 points, six rebounds, two assists, no turnovers. I mean, those are good stat line from those guys. And uh, the more, the better they can be and being solid, the better for us. Josh, the, the Lawson boys have no trouble firing it is do you ever have to tell Jeremiah to, to shoot the ball because it seems like the first three games he's kind of been a little tentative to shoot no I mean we, you know but he's the point guard so we want him to, to, to when he's in there at the point he's got to be able to move the ball and and, and find the open man and um, look the way we're going to play with pace we're going to there's going to be sometimes some bad shots here and there but our team is an unselfish team we're going to move the ball the open man's going to be the go-to man um, I did not feel, you know, we had 16 assists on 25 made field goals. Um, so we're, we're going to move the ball. We, we need to clean some things up. We weren't able to really do anything yesterday. So we will be off tomorrow, but had the next two days to work on us before we play UT Arlington and it, for us to continue to get better and clean some things up that we need to clean up. Josh, 150 wins now. Any thoughts on that milestone? Um, you know, uh, that's a, you know, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it, but I do know this: that on all of our wins, um, you know, it's the players who've won the game. It's not me, and uh, it's the staff putting together the scouting report. But in the end, it's the players grabbing the rebounds, making the assist, and putting the ball in the basket. Uh, it's a players' game. Players win games. So, um, if you ask me. Seven years ago, you know, at this point, at 38, would I have 150 wins? I would. I was just trying to get through. I remember, you know, our first exhibition game, and then versus Jackson State, our first Countable game. And people say, "Well, has it been a quick ride? Has it been quick?" No, it's been. It's been a. It's been a battle. I mean, it's been. It's there's been. I got a lot more gray when I before I started. I'm only 38. So, um, but that being said. Any one of our wins, all credit goes to the players because we don't win without the players. The players win us the games.